Good morning, folks. Brad Cross here, BJ Shot North. Hey, we're down here on the Tennessee River this morning. Uh, it ain't early, it's late, man. Late in the morning, about 10, 10 30. Uh, I had some things I had to do today, uh, so I couldn't get out here first thing. Beautiful day, man. The river right now is slick as glass. Uh, you know, they're starting to slow our current down a little bit. Uh, the water's clearing up just a little. So I'm hoping things is making a turn for the, for the better. But uh, I got two rods out the back dragging. I fixed to throw out two more, but I'm gonna drag one little strip here. It's about 200 yards wide and uh, about 200 yards long. And I'm fixing to drag it through and then back through. And if I don't do any good there, we're gonna go start hitting some, some pinpoint spots out here uh, and just sit on top of them, let the bait soak. Uh, a lot of times you gotta change up what you know, what you wanna do for what the fish you're gonna want you to do. And I think right now, uh, most of the fish you can catch is gonna be, you know, sitting still. I'll show y'all how I hook my shad, cause most, most of my videos I've done, I've used skipjack. Uh, so today we're using shad, but you see that's how small the head is. And I cut the tail off and that's the body piece. Uh, that's a 10 off circle hook. What I do, I just run it right, right there, right behind that school. And since the bait's smaller, I'll put me a couple heads on there or a couple bodies, it don't make no difference. And you can still make a, a bigger size bait out of, out of small bait. Uh, do you have to have bigger bait to catch big fish? Absolutely not. But uh, I do like enough on there to at least get that hook full. Uh, one thing too, it keeps you from getting hung up if you got something in there to kind of keep that gap filled. So. What we're fishing out here is just a, it's just a ditch out in the middle of the river. There's, there's a bunch of them out here. Uh, some of them have fish in them, some of them don't. Now some of them may have fish now, some of them don't, but then two weeks from now it may be totally opposite. The ones that don't have fish may have fish in them. It just depends on the current. Uh, He ain't no monster fish, but he's a good blue. Right there, folks. Fat rascal. They stuck on the bottom. Oh. Like I said I figured it would be with all this current, muddy water, and everything. young guy. Spider web or cobweb or something was all in my face. These fish are stacked up out here in these ditches. And not all of them are eating, eating fish. This right here is what, what's mostly biting. All blue. Be a good one to eat, man. He's so cold, he's pink. <laughs> that ain't what we're after. Man, that'd be a good one to eat. He's been wrapped up in a trot line. 
Yeah, you see right there where you got a hole. Got a hole right there inside of his head where it's been hooked to the trot line. It's hard to tell in this current. I'm pulling against a lot of current and the boat's moving, but I think it's a pretty decent fish. I don't think he's no little fish, that's for sure, but I can't tell how big he is. I don't think he's ever come off the bottom, to be honest with you. Try to get my net over here before he starts acting the fool. Yep, yep. He definitely got some weight to it. Yeah, that's a big fish. You see them bubbles back there? I'm glad he did that, man. It's always good to see them bubbles before you bring them up. He felt, but he's, he's a good fish. <laughs> he felt like a 50 pounder. <laughs> well, well, we'll definitely take him. He's a nice fish. Ugly, ugly old looking thing, man. Looks like he's been stuck on the bottom for couple weeks. Alright folks, there's a nice blue cat. Tickle to death to have that one, man. Uh, he ain't that big, you know, he's a, not a monster, not what we're after, but conditions like this, hey, we'll take him. Uh, he's skinny, man. Long, skinny rascal. I mean, he ain't even got a belly on him much. Well, let's get him back, see if we can get us another one. That was just plum rude. <laughs> Slap water right in my face. Tell you what, it's still warmed up today, man. It's supposed to get up to 65. Oh, it's kind of crazy. Two weeks ago, it was the low was two degrees at my house. Oh, uh, and then here it is, maybe 14 days later, maybe not even that long. It's you know 65 degrees this morning, uh, but it's it's you know it's warmed up nicely. 
the water temperature's come up 51 degrees uh, since I got here. It was 48. You know, this is going to be good for the fishing. And then next week, I think this area is supposed to be, you know, around in the 60s too. So it'll make the fishing real good anytime you get them warm fronts like it in the winter. It warms the, it warms the water up, you know, up here on the surface, not down there deep. But, you know, it, it just gets the fish more active. I think that sun beaming off the bottom, uh, you know, even heats up the bottom of the river, even though it don't make the water temperature change because, uh, you know, in the Tennessee River, it's moving. But on the surface, uh, it just it just seems like it makes them want to move around and, and, and get in predictable places and makes them a whole lot easier to catch. I think he's going to be a little guy. Fish right there. You got him a mile full of shad. I'm gonna have to burp him if I can get that tube down there. Down his mouth is awful small, and them, them shad still stuck in his throat. It's not gonna be easy. Fish is so cold, it's pink. Fin is pink. It's ice cold, man. We back at it again, folks. Dragging. Oh, I couldn't do any good. I caught them two fish. Oh, spot locked over a, a ditch out there. And I went and checked over timber. There's fish everywhere. Just can't get them to bite. Oh, so I'm just gonna cover a little bit of water. What time I got left this evening? Oh, I'm gonna drag this strip right here. Uh, it's a ditch running with the river parallel and then I got another ditch over here that's a cross current. It's a little harder to drag but that's why I caught that big one uh, this, this morning or the bigger fish. Uh, like I said, there's some there's fish everywhere. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Everything looks like it's suspended. But, you know, you think they wouldn't be suspended out here in this, this heavy current. And it may not be catfish. It could be striped. Uh, you know, do you think a catfish would hunker down? Uh, I haven't seen much of anything on the bottom. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, it'll get back this morning. Uh, I struggled to catch shad. I mean, I caught plenty of shad, but they was all small. Uh, the bigger ones, you know, they 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 kind of know what to do. You know, they they've lived through this cold. They know where to go when it gets cold to survive. But when the water warmed up like it, all the small ones shot up in that creek and. Uh, you know, there was big ones down there, but your net get full of small ones before it ever got to the big ones. Easy, but, but it'll get it'll get better from now on. You know, from here on out, it'll start getting better. Plus, we get to spring. When spring rolls around, you know, they they'll be uh they'll be a lot more predictable then. You know, because everything starts thinking about the spawn. Now, you know, in the shad kill, you know, that's the that's the biggest deal. The fish are full. You know. Uh, I didn't figure it would affect these fish out here in the middle of the river because most of the shad I've seen has been on the bank or up in the creek. It's still tough, man. The water's, uh, I guess the fish are still aggravated, you know. There's fish all over the graph, everywhere I've been, out here in the middle, on the banks, in the timber. Uh, I was going to go drag a creek, but there's already a boat in there, so I, I ain't going to fool with them. Like I said, it's just, just one, of them, one of them deals, you know, things are still off in this area of the Tennessee River. I'm sure some parts of the Tennessee River is, is back to normal, you know, we're getting there. Because uh, it's different, man. Every lake's different. Uh, you know, I'm close to the dam. This is a small lake. This is Wilson Lake. I can see a dam right there, and I can see a dam down there. So that's how small this lake is, 15 miles. Uh, it don't take long when that sun starts going down for it to start cooling off again. You know, it's... 65 degrees, but it's still winter time. You know, it's still got that little bite in there. This water temperature is 40, 47 degrees. 
Well, it's up 50 now. But you know, 50 degrees cold, you're getting that wind, a little breeze blowing off of that cold water. It gets, gets cold pretty fast. I apologize for the sun in the camera. It was behind them clouds and then I start talking and it pops out. Just dumped all my bait out, what I had left. Watch them go into a feeding frenzy. <laughs> That'd be my that'd be my luck for sure. I've had that happen before, especially you know when I'm doing a morning trip. You know, fish just quit biting, and I start getting everything ready to go, and then all of a sudden, bam, they start biting, and then I done dumped all my bait. But it's getting close to dark. I got about 15 minutes before the sun is completely down. I got about a two mile ride back to the truck. It's not that far, but I don't want to do it in the dark. But this is the time of the day for the evening to catch a big fish. I'm a morning, I, I love to fish in the morning. That's my thing I always have. I've had better luck in the morning. Uh, I don't do a lot of evening fishing. I do fish at night some in the summertime, but this time of year, I, this time of year, I normally don't fish at all in the evenings, uh, unless I have to, you know, today I didn't have much choice. But getting out here late, you know, I missed the morning bite if it was a morning bite. Uh, I don't think it would have been hot no matter what time you got out here, but uh, we're gonna give it, give it till, you know, right before dark. And, May, may pull up a big and I'm fixing to hit a ledge right here. I just come out of my ditch and I'm finna go up this little ledge right here as far as I can. Y'all look at them, look at them seagulls back there where I throw that bait out. They wasn't even none around me. I mean, I could hear them way off, but them things have got eyes like, like nothing else. I reckon the little shed that I chunked out, they, they float back there. I mean, they just, they came out of nowhere. All right, folks, we're gonna wrap this one up. I uh, had another tough day, man. Just caught a few fish. Uh, caught one decent fish, uh, better than the last trip for sure, but not much, but uh, it'll get better. You know, these warm days ahead, it's gonna, gonna change some things. It'll get things back to normal the water. The river gets back to, you know, normal current flow. It, it, it'll, it'll be good again. Uh, but anyway, I thank y'all for taking the time out of your day or your night and watching my video. I wanna say thanks to all my subscribers. Hey, if you hadn't subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button, man. I really appreciate it. Love to have you on the team. Uh, catch y'all on the next one. Y'all have a good night. God bless you.